Welcome everybody, this is BC and I welcome you back on another video. This is going to be an expansion of the uh, objection series that we continue and in this one I'm going to cover the age-old objection. We want to think about it, give you some perspectives on it and I first want to break this video up into several segments. At the end or near the end I'm going to give you some replies to give to them but first I'm going to cover two things, right? Number one, the fact that you have to look at many aspects of your process, meaning from the moment you contact a, a prospect or a customer, from your hello or your first text message or your first email, right? All the way to where you, where you ask them to sign or to buy. Somewhere in that process, a lot of times, there's a misstep or an error that causes that I wanna think about it. It's not so much your final portion, which is a common mistake that people think. They think it's, oh, my, the last five minutes of my presentation caused them to say, I wanna think about it, when in fact it may have been up here. So if we tighten up the process, it will give us the result of no objection, okay? Number two is our mental resistance or almost our avoidance of that objection and objections in general. And I'm gonna cover a little bit why uh, that has to be sorted out because what you resist, you get more of. It's a universal law. If you resist something, that means you're focusing on it and you're trying to get away from it, right? And the way that'll pop up in sales is, for example, um, somebody doesn't wanna hear a certain objection, so they'll steer the conversation, not how they normally would, but away from certain subjects so that's not brought up, right? That unconsciously screams that you're insecure about something and that you're trying to hide something and more than likely it will come up. If it doesn't, you got lucky. If it does, phew, the world comes crashing down on you, right? And you know that anxiety that you get. And you start, and this is a mistake because of it, you start giving off unconscious triggers to the customer, which is cracks in your voice and tonality. Um, something's off in your body language. You make weird reactionary facial expressions, and that does more damage than anything you would ever say. And people don't realize this. This is why I cover a lot of that unconscious stuff because that's ultimately what's more important than just the 7% of communication which is the words. So we have to check ourselves mentally. You have to be okay confronting that beast of uncertainty, of unknown. It's okay if you're not the best. Go watch my older videos when I was coming up, all right? How many people do you see talking shit? Oh, you sound scripted, you sound salesy. That's fine, I was new, but I had the fucking balls to put a video out and say, this is me cold calling. I don't give a shit what people say. And now, those same people, even back then, I could probably wipe the floor with them with my skill, but now, forget it. They're not even in the same league as me. Okay? That's because I put in my work and I continue to do it and there was no resistance to this failure or these objections. I said, bring one objection, bring them all. I may not have the answer now, but God damn it, I'm going to get so good at it that I can handle any objection, anytime, any place. Okay? That's the mentality you have to adopt and it takes time. So be willing to grab the bull by the horns is what I'm saying. Okay? Now, let's look at your process from when you say hello or the, the first interaction or the first time the customer sees you all the way to the end. What does your process look like? What can be improved? Take a look at it and say where is there maybe a misstep? Because for example, when you hear I want to think about it, many times um, the customer doesn't have enough information, right? I don't want to say information. I want to say they haven't gotten all their questions answered, right? We'll, we'll leave it at that. So let's say somewhere in your process right, for you realtors, let's say they have a question about what you actually do, what your process looks like. I do something in real estate, for example, where we send them a pre-listing package. If we go on a listing appointment, for those of you not in real estate, we meet with a client to possibly put their house for sale on the market, okay? What I will do before I meet with them is I'll send them a pre-listing package which covers a little bit about myself and my company. It gives them testimonials from past clients, phone numbers if they want to call them. It gives us the full marketing plan and what we do to expose a home and all that stuff. All the stuff that a customer or prospect typically asks, we send it and we really urge them over and over to read it. And I have them read it and, and go over it and watch the videos just to familiarize themselves with it because I don't want those questions or doubts coming up at the end when I ask them to sign, right? So how many of you maybe don't do that or you could make your pre-listing package better if you already are sending it or you have actually have to get them to read it, then at the end, they start asking, well, what do you do? And they ask you questions that were answered in the pre-listing package. Now, if they want to verify or go over a little bit deeper on some of the points, 
that's fine. We can elaborate. However, if we look at this logically, imagine if you send that package and all goes well and they read it, you're not going to get those objections or uncertainties from the client at the end because previous to that, it was already handled. In the moment, right? When you're meeting with the prospect, you're live on the phone and you want to close them, right? Um, if that stuff wasn't done before in the moment, it may be too much for them, which is another reason people get, I want to think about it. You steamroll through too much at times, right? And the customer may have missed something. If the customer isn't hundred percent sure about certain things, right? As far as their own understanding of it, their own understanding of it and their own interpretation of it, they will slap you with the We want to think about it, right? So you have to make sure it might be clear before every point is made, after every point is made, before I transition into the next thing in a presentation or in a conversation, I say, are we 100% clear on that? Do you understand? Are we on the same page? I want to make sure. Because even if I get a uh, yeah, like a uh, yeah, or yeah, to me that's a no. So we have to pick up on those subtleties. And I'm like, okay, 100%, are, are you sure? The price, this, this explanation, what we do here. Are you sure? It's okay if you're not. We'll go over it again, no problem. I want a yes, 100%, Brian, we are good to go, we understand. We have to now challenge that. Because remember, any uncertainty, any doubt in their mind about anything, about you, what you offer, your product, your service, at the end will equal, I want to think about it. And it's not that they have to understand logically your whole product, it's in their own mind, from their own perspective again, they need to feel like, okay, I know enough. Okay? So we have to pick up on that. Now, we're adding your process. Have you noticed that when you do lead follow-up, there's hesitancy or, or, or they avoid you? Did you notice your initial conversations and contacts with uh, prospects are a little bit rocky, right? You rush. You don't really take your time, which is probably the second biggest mistake people make is, I understand in sales we have to create urgency, sure, but we rush, right? We rush. And who likes to be rushed? Okay? If you're a woman watching this, do you like it when a man rushes everything with you? and tries to seduce you super fast or move along and try to create a relationship too fast. No, we don't like that. How about as a customer, we've all felt and been in a situation where somebody rushed us through the sale. Now maybe we wanted, really wanted that product or service. Sure, of course, but still, when we feel rushed, we don't like that, okay? You can still do the process fairly quickly, really fast actually, and not seem rushed. You need to make sure your perspective is, I'm thinking about the customer and their needs. I will get the sale. The sale is over here. Sure, I'll get it. But am I really honing in on them and what they want and really paying attention to what they're saying? Okay? If that element is missing, you will get I want to think about it. For sure. Because they know deep down inside, this person doesn't care. They just want to rush me to get a paycheck. So take a look at that. Take a step back and slow down. Again, that's number two, one of the biggest mistakes. Slow down. Don't ask for the appointment or sale now, right? Or you can ask now, but don't keep ask, 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 ask. Take a step or two back, ask a few more questions, then go for it again. Then take a step or two back, one steps forward, two steps back, one step forward, two steps back. Take your time, okay? You will do much better, the prospect will feel much more comfortable, and in the end, you're going to get way more sales, okay? So as we have dissected this whole process for you. And again, depending on what industry you're in, that's gonna be different, but I recommend you get the magnifying glass and say, what can be improved here? Where is there ever bumps, right? Am I having trouble having a conversation way at the beginning? Am I having trouble with actually getting a hold of them after the first conversation and setting up a meeting or that follow-up phone call to close them? Am I now um, having issues with, I talk to them, I follow up, no problem, but then when I set the meeting, a lot of them flake or constantly reschedule. Okay, if that's 90% of the time, what's missing here that I need to fix? Or is it the presentation or phone call where I now make the sale, where I get a lot of hangups or, or, or people telling me no, or I want to think about it? Okay, then I need to look back and say, okay, maybe it's just my presentation now. So when you start looking at it from different angles, you can start really picking out what's missing and what can be improved. Sometimes nothing's missing. You can just tighten up the screws a little bit and improve your process in order to make your whole sale that much smoother, that much better. That's how we can objectively look at things and make everything smoother, make everything stronger, and ultimately make more sales and convert more leads, and we can get that percentage up to something that's more um, acceptable, we can say, right? Now, 
the last part, which is some dialogues. Okay. I said in the beginning, one of the biggest mistakes people make is when they hear, I want to think about it, there's an internal resistance to it. You have to get rid of that. You have to be okay. You have to know people will throw objections. Okay. You have to be comfortable with it. You have to understand that that's a part of being a great salesperson is navigating because even though everything you sell or do makes sense to the customer from their perspective and in their world, it may not yet. So when you get an objection, you think about it as an opportunity to say, well, this person would like to work with me. However, they just haven't fully decided yet or they don't clearly see the picture yet. Let me help them. Now from that position, you welcome an objection and you're like, sure. Oh, oh you want to think about it. Okay. Now there's not this, oh, they said they want to think about it. Okay. Because the moment you react to that and you become reactive, you lost. Because again, unconsciously you're telling them you're weak. You don't know what you're doing and that all you want is a sale and you're communicating all the wrong things. Okay. So they say, I want to think about it. Cardinal rule. You never disagree with them. Of course, that makes sense. You agree with them, right? Then you can start presenting other options. Great. Well, based on everything that I've discussed today, um, normally when I hear, I want to think about it, something was left unclear or maybe there was a few questions that weren't answered. Is that the case? And they'll tell you, right? You have to remember guys, before I continue here, a lot of times people will say that there is a hidden objection under it, right? It's a smoke screen. Most of us know that if you don't, well, there you go, right? <clears throat> Cause if you think about it logically, we want to think about it. What is it? <clears throat> what is it? That doesn't make any sense. If they don't like the price of your product, thinking about it, isn't going to change it. If they don't like your contracts, for example, thinking about it, isn't going to change it. That's said because a lot of people fear confrontation and they don't want to tell you the truth or they don't feel comfortable enough with you to tell them the truth. Okay. <clears throat> so back to the example that I said, is that the case? They may tell you, well, no, you know, we just want to talk it over and da 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 da. Now you have to pay attention very closely because as you start asking more questions and that's all you have to do is hang in there and ask questions, they'll slowly or directly start revealing what it is. Now, if they say something like that, they say a bunch of stuff, and this is where you want to pay attention because they may say 200 words, but there'll be a key sentence in there. They'll talk about whatever. And then you might hear, well, me and the husband just wanted to discuss it privately. And then brrr, I zoom in on that sentence because then I can take that from all that stuff they gave me. I can take that and work with it and use that sentence to move the sale forward. So what I mean by that is let's say they say that I want to talk privately. I may throw an objection handler like this and say, great. And I'm glad you guys brought that up. And a lot of times people just want to be able to make the decision now without me sitting in front of them. So I'll tell you what, I have a few calls to return. Let me step outside for 10 or 15 minutes and return these calls. All right. Give you guys a chance to talk about it privately. Pause. Use their words. Talk about it privately. Right. That's another uh, key sentence to really influence people. So let you guys talk about it privately and then I'll come back in and look, you can tell me no or yes. If you tell me no, no problem. If you tell me yes, I'll get everything ready and I'll get back to the office immediately and get to work. Okay. And I go out. Okay. I've used that one a few times. Every time I've used it, it's worked. That's one example of digging a little bit deeper, getting something from them, using what they said, and then now using that their own language and that sentence, whatever they gave me, whatever they gave me in that moment to move the sale forward. Now they may tell you stuff. Let's say they're vague. Ah, well, we're just not sure. Okay, cool. Now you need to know what are the major decision making criteria for your product or service? I know for real estate, it's very simple. The price that we've agreed upon, if they've actually decided to sell their home or buy a home, whatever, right? In this case, we'll pretend it's a seller and we're doing a presentation. So if they've decided to sell and actually committed to doing this two is the price we set on the property to put it on the market and three, who they want to, to choose. That's it. That's the only criteria 99.9% .9 of the time. Okay. So I'll say, great. I understand. Let's say the second time they answered vague. Typically when it comes to the decision of selling your property, and that's where you can add whatever the decision of buying this product, uh, would you agree with me, Mr. And Mrs. Seller or Mr. Seller? It comes down to three things. Number one, if you've decided to make this move, number two, the price that we've set on your home and three, who you want to represent you, right? That pretty much encompasses the decision, doesn't it? And they're going to tell you yes there. When they tell you yes, 
they've agreed. Okay? Now, I've never had anybody tell me no there, but if they do, then you can say, okay, what else is a criteria? Then they'll tell you, and then you add it to that list, then you repeat all of them, and then you confirm with them again. Okay? Now, you walk through it. This is called a deduction approach. Very simple, classic sales. Cool. So, have you guys absolutely decided to sell this home? Yes. Number one. Number two. The price. Are we in agreement that this is the right price? Yes. And three, who do you want to represent you? Do you feel comfortable and 100% confident that I can't help you sell this home? They say yes again to all three. Boom. Then you go in and you say, great. Sounds like the decision is made. Let's take care of that paperwork and go ahead and get started. Now, there, if there's an objection, they'll say no. Well, the price, we kind of see it, but we don't. Now you go back and you handle that objection because you've just drawn it out. Okay? So, those are just a couple quick tips. I'm going to keep this series going. As always, uh, thank you guys for, for watching. I appreciate you. Make sure you like the video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment below if you have any other tips for people on we want to think about it. Again, as always, I'm going to give a few announcements. Supreme being my podcast. It's now on Stitcher. It is on uh, Google Play, iTunes, Spotify, all the big platforms, Podomatic. Make sure you subscribe. We're getting, you know, at this point, thousands of downloads a week. So thank you guys. Secondly, my personal coaching and mentorship program, Modern Success, make sure you guys get on. If you like this type of content, we go way deeper in that group. Mindset, confidence, sales, all kinds of stuff. I'll be breaking 200 members this month, so it definitely is a very great group. You go to briancasella.com, you go to the coaching tab, and you check it out. It's only 97 bucks a month, okay? And lastly, for all of you real estate agents who follow me who are hearing about or interested in eXp Realty, if you want to sign up, go to join.exprealty.com, put me as your sponsor. And I have a special offer for you. Or make sure you contact me privately on Facebook or Instagram and I'll give you more information about the company. Okay, that's it for this one. We'll see you guys on the next video. Peace out.